Queen live. You're live. All right. Hey. Hey, everyone. Dave here with Affordable Door and Gate. Got a great question from Evan. Evan, I always appreciate the questions. Just as a reminder, you guys can always email me. I always put it in the description of Dave A. Dubson at gmail.com. Um, that's normally always the best way to get a hold of me. Um, through the video, obviously, we're doing a live stream today. So you're more than welcome to. Um, ask questions during. I'll probably try to answer them towards the end. Um, once we get towards the end, I'll try to let you know uh, what Evan's, that one basically done with Evan's question. So you don't watch this whole video because sometimes you get kind of lengthy. You guys got good questions. I like to try to answer them. Plus you always guys got some good comments. I mean, I just, I love, I love you guys. You guys just tell me so much what's going on out there and all the industry standards and just openers and all kinds of stuff that they're having problems with. So I really appreciate it. All right, so it sounds like Evan, uh, three years ago, had a torsion spring. It broke. He ended up, uh, instead of you know buying all the parts and stuff like that and the tools, he ended up just hiring somebody. Now, here's the thing. Hopefully, uh, let me check here, make sure. Is audio good on this? I got to make sure audio is good. Somebody's got to give me an audio. Let me know audio is okay. And I'll talk about this for a second here. All right. So sounds like we're, we're audio. So with Evan, he didn't have the tools. Now, obviously understand with garage doors, they are extremely dangerous, extremely dangerous. So don't listen to this knucklehead on YouTube. Um, consult somebody that's a professional. So here's the thing. To find out if a garage door is balanced, this is just how I roll with it. Uh, I'm not saying it's 100% the right way, but it'll at least give you some insight how to do it. So first thing we got to do is we got to, I made you, I made you a picture. Here's a picture. This is a, you're looking at, you're in the inside of the garage, looking at the garage door. This would be a garage door. Here's your torsion spring, right? We got to get this. We got to get, we got to dump this torsion spring. So what we'll do is when we'll, we'll dump this torsion spring, assuming you have the right tools, don't use a screwdriver, make sure you got you know, winding bars. I've seen guys use rebar and grind them a little bit. Just get winding bars. They're not that expensive. Just buy them. And what I like to do is I'll show you here. Get yourself a scale. This is actually one off my old truck. So you can see it's, you know, you don't want to break the one in the house. It's the wife's it's digital. I just like these old screw style right here. And you got to get this under the door. So we got to get the weight of that door. What I like to do is I like to actually, mind you, if the windy bar stuck in here and you actually have good set screws, what I like to do is I like to back wind this spring with windy bars. It's a little bit tough. And what I do is I actually I put some clamps. I use vice grips. I put vice grips on the, on the cables. So as I do it, as I'm back winding that spring and, and I got my scale under the garage door you can't see here, it'll literally... Um, the weight will free fall. And what I do is I typically will have a helper, either have girlfriend, wife, friend, somebody. You can set up a camera if you don't got nobody and a tripod, put it on a video record. I've done that before. You know, when the customer's not there, nobody's around. Basically what you can do is you can record it. So when you dump it, the weight will come on that scale. It'll have a number. We got to figure out the weight of that door. Now I'm kind of overkill. So what I like to do is I typically like to um, sometimes they ask for it. Sometimes they don't like if I call service spring and by the way, Evan, if you end up, um, watching the video or if you're just anybody passing through, you're more than welcome to email me. Um, as long as you give me as much information, I can try to help you out. I'm not real fast, so don't expect the next day delivery here, but I could always probably get you what you need to tell you really what kind of spring should be on there. The next thing is the radius. This is like a side view here of the track. This is a way I kind of cheat over the years. I'm not saying it's proven, but it works for me anyways. And it's like nine times out of 10, always good. I think even more. So I look at the track. You got these brackets here, right? Your flags. And this one is at the very top. It pins to this one and it pins to this one right here at the very top. And you see there's your bearing plate up there. That's typically a 15 inch radius is what I normally see around here anyways. If it's lower... Then the other flag bracket, this other one that's going vertical, you see how that's right there? A lot of times what I'll do, and then the flag bracket can intertwine right up here. 
it's typically a 12 inch radius. Sometimes they like to know, it just depends on how big a door you're going. Um, so there, you got the track, you got the weight of the door. I want to know too, what size is the door? Is it in, in a lot of guys screw this up. I see this across industry a lot. We want to know you got, you know, we go width and then we go height width and height. So it's a 16 by seven. It's a nine by seven. Things of that nature. A lot of guys always flipping around. They're like, oh, you know, I need a seven by eight. And it's like a seven. Do you really want it seven wide and eight tall? Like, you know, typically we kind of figure it out. So with that being said, um, weighted door, size of door, radius of track. Got that. On the turns, I seen you mention something about the turns. Um, it depends who installed it. There's a couple ways guys do it. You, there might be marks on there if it's not that old because the manufacturer will actually put marks on them for us and they'll have like white lines and typically you can count the turns so you can see the lines as they twist. A lot of times um, they, for residential, it's typically the height plus maybe like a half a turn. So if you got a seven foot tall door, You'll have about seven, maybe maybe eight on the high end of turns on that spring if you count the lines. It's all kind of very, it varies a little bit on the cone and where you start. But that's just kind of a rule of thumb. Um, a lot of times, like any garage door spring, I always mark them for myself and for the future for somebody who's got to walk up to it. See, I'm a, I'm a very visual person. I like to be able to walk up to something and go, that spring came unwound. I don't know why or how but or I can count this side has one more turn than the other. Another thing to think about, you know, since you told me it's, it's, um, it seems like the door is hot. It sounds like obviously probably put maybe a little bit of the wrong spring on there. Um, and I'll give you, once we kind of get into it, I think I'll get up to about 10 minutes in this video. And then what I'll do is I'll, I'll kind of do some stories on it and stuff like that. Um, but it just depends on what was there. If it was honestly me, if, if you called a company, like if you called uh, affordable door and gate, let's just say, and what I would do is I would explain to them the situation because uh, things happen. The technician might've not been, um, he might've just not had the springs. I've done that. I ran out of the spring I needed and I've, I've jumped to another size just to get the customer up and running because of the situation. I don't know what your situation was. It could have been, you know, Hey, can you get out here? We got to get this thing running. We got to get our parents. We got people coming over, all kinds of stuff happens. So we do all kinds of weird things. Um, so it could have been the technician. It could have been, uh, they just didn't know, you know, and since it's hot, that automatically makes me think something's not quite because Typically, garage doors will, the garage door springs will relax a little bit over time. And three years is plenty of time. Um, so hopefully it's not doing any real damage or harm to your opener, garage door opener. Um, if you got an opener on it, it's it's probably, you know, it's probably not the end of the world, depending on how I call it hot it is. Um, it just, it just depends. You know, I kind of like a door. I'd rather have a door a little bit maybe hot in a situation, especially in this situation, since it's not mine, <laughs> because at least I know it hopefully won't come down like a guillotine and kill somebody or a kid, because I've seen that before in my own experience where it's been, you know, you pull down the, you know, you pull the disconnect, you know, from the power goes out or something. And man, that door goes, goes flying. It's not good at all. Checking to see. Checking to see. Checking to see. Okay. I just want to make sure audio is good. If anybody jumps on, just let me know if audio's you can hear me loud and clear and all that stuff. I just kind of new to the setup here. Like I said, it's still still playing around with things. So, but no. Um, I hope that kind of helps you out. Like I said, it's it's not it's not that you can't do it uh, with the whiny bars and whatnot. It's just you got to be really, really careful because if that spring slips or if the set screw is not down um, deep enough, you really should technically unwind one spring and then do the other. Uh, but just I've 
I've cheated over the years, you know, instead of doing uh, what I do that paper here, lost it. Instead of, you know, I, I back mine one spring right here. doesn't matter what side, you know, but really you should actually unwind both, you know, to be safe or at least dump it. It's just difficult because if you dump the one side, you got to remember when you're trying to pick up the other side, the door is lifting and it's it's just, it's a little bit more complicated. You just, the biggest thing with a lot of stuff is you got to just use common sense. That's really what it comes down to. You got to be smart, you know, wear some gloves, wear some eye protection, you know, and if you don't feel comfortable or you don't, don't even mess with it. Like I said, call somebody. And what I was trying to get at, that was pretty much my end of the um the question on that one. So now it's time to sit back and chill. But so in my, in the business I've had, um, I've had wrong springs. I will admit it. I've done it myself. Um, you know, you're out doing service calls, you're doing two or three, you get that second one or third one that turns out to be, um, you just don't got it. You know what I mean? I've, I've tried, I've switched springs, you know, do a 218, a 207, you know, 218, 225, you know, I've done things of that nature um, just to just to get by because, you know, when you're in business, it's really tough because you're, you know, if you go back, you know, especially depending on where you're at, how far away you are from the shop, um, not to say it's right, but, you know, sometimes customers can put a lot of pressure on you and um, they can just be running stuff down. you. You know what I mean? You know, Oh my gosh, you're five, you're 20 minutes late, whatever, you know, and you know, blah, blah, blah. And you're sitting there going, I got this door open and I sure as heck don't want to come back. You know what I mean? So you're like, you just throw something on there. I'm not saying it's right. I've had some too, that um, maybe uh, what's happened before to me is I've had previous installers put in the wrong spring and I piggyback, you know, cause the, you know, what happens is the spring will break. Um, they call you, you come out, right. And you're sitting there going, well, I didn't, you know, I didn't run this door before. I don't know what this door, how it behaved. So you put on the same exact set of springs and now the door is either, it's just not, something's not working right. You know, and I've had, especially like wood doors and stuff like that, older doors, you know, a lot of the modern doors, the metal doors, I can pretty much look at and I can probably tell what's going to, what it's going to need for garage door springs. But some of this old stuff, you know, especially if it's soaked up water, uh, moisture, older rollers. I mean, stuff that's really dated is, is super hard. Raynard likes to throw in the, the monkey wrench there sometimes too. Raynard manufacturer for garage doors. You know, they do like a, was it a two and one eight or something like that for wire size. So it's, it can be, it can be challenging out there when you're out in the field and when you're in the business, you don't want to, um, you know, you typically don't want to you know, run back to the shop to get the right ones. I was always going to invent, um, what I wanted to do was I always wanted to have a trailer and what I wanted to be able to do is I'd pull a trailer behind me, <clears throat> especially anything that was a broken spring and it had residential, it had commercial. And basically what you could do is you could pull out, you know, springs come in 10 foot links. You could pull out it, you could chop it to whatever you need. Um, and then you, you know, you'd have your scales on there. You'd have a lot of, um, more items um, than what you would have typically on your van um, or truck. You know what I mean? So anyways, I was just thinking about you guys. Um, I, I, we were driving by, we were out doing uh, some family adventures and I drove past a job yesterday and I had the wife, I'll try to put it in another video at some point, but I had the wife take some pictures and I told her, I said, you know, I said, I remember that garage right there. We were driving past. It was up north. And I said, I remember that place. I said, because that was where I said I had my old van. And with my old van, something was going wrong with the starter. I can't remember. It was an old Dodge. Uh, I think it was a 2500 Dodge. Gosh, I don't remember what year it was. It might have been in like a 1997. And uh, anyways, we, were, we had to hot wire it. Like it wasn't, something wasn't working, right? <clears throat> well, come to find out, maybe the ignition was broken and we just never fixed it and we couldn't turn it. Anyways, I'm under the hood, right? So I want you to picture this. This is kind of one of those funny jokes. Well, it wasn't a joke. It was real life. I, I, I like telling you guys this, especially some of you seasoned vets, you young guys coming into this industry. So anyways, I'm, uh, 
you know, I got a garage door behind me, right? Brand new garage door I just installed right behind me. My van picture is you, right? So I'm, I'm looking down, right? I'm under the hood. I hot wire that thing, right? For whatever reason, the darn van was in gear. Oh my gosh. That van fired up. Boom. She went, right? Started. Guess what started happening? Darn van started rolling right towards that garage door. I mean, I'm doing everything I can. Luckily, we had snow that day. And I remember the back tires spinning. And I'm sitting there holding it. Somehow, I, I don't know how I did it, by the grace of God. I ended up holding that van back. And I mean, it was moving just inch by inch, right? And I'm like, shut it off, shut it off. Luckily, luckily, I had my business partner there. And he ran around that van and he shut that van off. And I tell you what, it was like, come high or hell water, man. I was I was not letting this van crush this brand new garage door I just stacked in there. And it, I forget what size, it was like a 12 by, I don't know, 10 by 10 or 12 by 10, something like that. But man, I remember... I remember just holding on to that van for dear life, you know, and uh, I had one of my, one of my middle childs or was my oldest. I think it was my oldest one. She was with me and she was like, Oh wow. You know? And I said, you know, I said, it's funny because when you're starting out in business, I said, you know, I said, that was everything I was, I was, I said, I couldn't afford to let that van hit that garage door. <laughs> I didn't want it to hit that garage door. Could you imagine the customer wasn't home? You imagine come home and then we stacked a brand new garage door and, uh, it's it's caved in because my van ran into it. Oh, how embarrassing! But I couldn't. I, I forgot all about that, and I was just thinking about you guys. And I thought, oh my gosh, man! I remember when I was first starting out, we stacked that brand new garage door, and that darn thing. Sure enough, boom! That van started up, and I remember just holding it back. Oh my gosh! Shut it off! Shut it off! Shut it off! Shut it off! <laughs> oh man! So. But anywho, I'm going to wrap up the video eventually here. I um, I don't think there's any comments. At least I hope I didn't miss any, if there is any. Um, I don't think you guys have too many. You're not too chipper today. It's pretty It's pretty young in the day. I know everybody's just getting off work. Everybody's trying to get home. Everybody's out hustling, um, which is great. At least I hope you are because I know, I know the weather is changing. The economy is changing. And things are going to probably get a little bit more gloomy before they get more sunny is just my my guess. So anywho, yeah, these garage door springs, I tell you, they, they can go a lot of different ways. Um, you know, what else did Evan say on here? I was just trying to see. The door doesn't balance properly, wants to rush open. Operated by hand. What's the best way to determine springs? Too big. Yeah. You know, sometimes you can get a hold of the manufacturer too. If um, you know, if 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 it's from like a box store, sometimes they can help you out. Um, but if it was me, honestly, whoever installed it, I would probably just kindly call them and just say, "Hey, you know, I just I would really like somebody to take a look." And that phone call alone might bump up where somebody will like a like an owner. You know, like if it came through the business, basically a senior, somebody up higher is going to probably come look at it versus uh, maybe the rookie guy. Um, and so I would make that phone call. And if you got time, time is your your best, you know, your best thing. Just let, you know, because it doesn't sound like it's detrimental. I would just let it sit and ride out and just call them. Say, hey, can somebody come out when they get a chance? And I don't care if it's in two, three weeks, whatever. Just come out, take a look, make an adjustment. Heck, maybe they'll spray your door down, you know. If not, they might be, you know, they might say, oh, that's going to be a service call. Because sometimes the, the secretary are programmed that way, and but sometimes they're not. Just explain the situation to say, hey, I just don't know if this thing was done right from the get-go. You know, kindness goes a long ways. It really does. So what do you know? What's this guy saying? Evan, that better not be you. Mm, what's Evan say here? It's so weird. Everything's always different when you guys message. It's a Wayne doll. It's me. <laughs> oh man, you're funny. Can't find a model number on a Wayne Dalton. On a Wayne Dalton, you can't find a model number. It might be an older one. 
sometimes I don't know if you guys knew this on the Wayne Daltons. Um, which ones was it? I think it was before really the 9,000 series doors. Um, they used to be on the struts, the built-in struts that they, they had formed in there in the 9,000 series doors. You actually had to look underneath and there used to be yellow. There'd be a yellow marking under there and it would tell you certain things when it was built. I think it was more or less when it was built. And so that's just always something to keep in mind. Mr. Evan, you're a funny dude. And then you come on here. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, weigh that door, buddy. Weigh that door. That's the way to do it. Get yourself a scale. You know, I used to have a really nice scale. I got it from my grandma. She passed away a long time ago. And, man, that scale was nice because it had the base and then it had like a gooseneck on it. And so, like, it would go up, you know, I don't know three or four feet, whatever. So like if you're standing on it, you know, you could, you could look down and see the number right there and it had a, the dig, not digital, but it was, uh, you know, just like what I showed you. And man, I really miss that scale. I, I, I forget if it kind of got banged up and I thought, Oh, I'll scrap it. I'll get another one. You can't find those things. I mean, I know I could find if I go on eBay or something, but man, that was a nice scale because it was nice. Cause when you're on the ladder, right, you could look down and you could see the number, right? And then you could dump the spring back. So hopefully, another thing I was just thinking about with that door is if it's a Wayne Dalton, hopefully, Evan, if you can tell me, it's not it's not Torque Master. Um, typically, Torque Master has a sticker on it, and that'll have um, the weight typically is what we've done. Torque Master is a little more tricky. It's hard to order. It's hard. It's got to be hard for guys out there that are starting out, you know, especially when they don't, um, you know, have like an account. Like, how do you even get a, how do you get a Torque Master? How do you get a Torque Master if you don't, you know, what do you think about that, Evan? I see you wrote some here. How do you, how do you, can you even get Torque Master, Evan? I want to know. How do you get it? Do you get it from a, like a third party or you get it, you let you a dealer of them or what? Because that's got to be kind of weird. I, I'm trying to think of how I would even, I don't know, I guess I'd have to go to another door company. And so, ah, dual torsion. It's regular dual. Nice. That's awesome. Yeah, get the weight of the door, you know. And realistically, you know how it is. You got Uncle Dave here. Just take some pictures. I like pictures. I like a lot of pictures. And you can always just email them. What I'll probably do... Evan, is I, I'll actually probably, I don't remember if you emailed me. I think you have. So what I'll try to do is I'll try to shoot you, shoot you my number. And you can always, um, you can always just text them to me. I know it's easier. If you're like me, the, the smartphone is the way to go. This thing is crazy being on here and you see chats. My phone pulls up the chats, but the old computer doesn't. Very interesting. Very interesting. It's weird how technology works these days. I'm still trying to figure out. We got this um, we got a little electric fan by our by our uh, wash machine. And every time I turn the electric fan off, it makes my wash machine click. Never understand that. It's very very interesting. So, what's Mister Evan? What else are you working on out there? You guys are quiet today. I think there's a few of you. But anywho. Yeah, like I said, get the weight of that door if you can. Dump that spring somehow. Just stick a winding bar in that puppy and back winder a little bit. And uh, get the weight of it. I can probably ask uh, one of the secretaries, and they can probably figure it out pretty. I could probably look on the app, too. I think Service Spring. Service Spring's got some pretty nice stuff on their, um, on their apps. You can find... Uh, you can do quite a bit on there. I think you can put weighted doors and stuff. I don't use it as much as I used to. Um, I know the one guy at the shop, he, he, he's like a master. He's a master on it. He's like, this is what it is. And I'm like, how do you like, he was always, he was a master at the book before I was too. We used to have to carry the books around and get the, what are they? PPTs or whatever, or IPPT. I can't remember. It was, it was so many, so many things on those. There really is. So let me think here. What else can I help you guys out there with? What else you guys need? 
what else are you learning about? It's so weird using all this other stuff. I'm so used to different technology. Let's just say. I got something coming out too with that uh the old Milwaukee. Where are you at? It's on this side. It's opposite. I got a do a review on that power pack. Some of you guys probably seen I did the the one for the oh when I did the welder. I was impressed. I was very impressed that the welder ended up working on that thing. Very. So, you know, <clears throat> I tell you guys a story. I feel like I want to tell you a story. We got the fire going. I got the fire going for you. Yeah. Can we, I mean, can we get a thumbs up for the fire? I mean, who doesn't love a good smelling fire? I mean, so <sighs> I was thinking about today and I was thinking I kind of got the, the PTSD that kicked in. And I don't know if you guys have ever seen um, this lady. How do I explain it? I'm going to see if I can find it. But this customer, as I'm, I'm, as I'm going through this, sometimes what you guys, I don't think, some people see in the business and I, and, and this is more, sometimes I don't like telling you guys this stuff because for one, you know, it's kind of embarrassing. And for two, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want people to think, oh my gosh, you know, there's just no way I'm going to ever get into this. You know what I mean? But I look at it, right. And I, and I like to tell the truth on it because there was just so many things I didn't know in the garage door business. So many hidden things that I had to go through alone and I had to kind of think I was the only one out there. And so it's, it's, it's fun because I get your guys' emails. I get texts, I get emails. Um, I, I get in the comments. It's, it's great. And what it is, is that it's, I just want you to see, Right. I want you to see everything that I kind of see in the business. So it's kind of you have a you have a full understanding because I love when I watch other people in business, tow trucks and landscaping and all these guys. And they end up, uh, you know, they tell you these stories and it's like, oh, my gosh, I never even I never thought about that. Like I could see where that's a big problem. So the big thing is you get you get kind of like PTSD right in the business is what I found. And with that it can be pretty overwhelming. So let me give you kind of a picture, right? So I got this one customer right now and he ends up, I did a gate for him, right? And I, I installed what the fence guy provided and that's all fine and dandy. It's been really, it's been a pretty good customer. And so I'm not bashing him. But anyways, accessories are always the death of a lot of things. They're death of garage door openers. They are the death of gate operators. Typically, the machines are pretty well built for the most part, right? If you buy something good, you know, maybe Liftmaster, Lanier, you know, Genie, you know, but it's always the accessories, right? It's always the safety stuff. So anyways, he's having issues with photo eye issues. You know, when we're getting snow, we're getting misty rain, we're getting fog, right? It's a common problem. Well, come to find out, we, you know, there's a way to resolve that. You put on these nice, they make these super, I should get a picture for somebody, they make these super nice metal cabinets that the photo eyes sit into. And like, there's no way darn near the weather unless it's coming completely, you know, uh, horizontal, you know, the wind or whatever, it's not getting penetrated. There's no film on it. There's no moisture on it. It sits back in this beautiful box. They're beautiful, but they're $460 my cost, especially when there's two gate operators there. It gets a little pricey, you know what I mean? That's like I said, my cost by the time you mark it up, you know, time we got installation, we got concrete anchors, we got you know, glue and everything. And it's just weird how these guys, like, you know, they so I told them, I said, Well, look, I said, I don't think you really want to spend this kind of money at the moment. I said, Why don't we go a little bit cheaper? So we're gonna do the plastic covers and stuff like that. I've done it before, I'll probably take a little 
you know, clip of it when I do it. And so like today, right They're you know, Hey, when you coming out, when you coming out, when you coming out, when you coming out. And I've noticed in the business, cause I, you know, I got, I got other businesses and you know, what's really crazy about this business is that it's like in this, in, the, in this line of work, I mean, let me know what you think, you know, you're, you're kind of like always behind, right? Like you're, you're like, you're always doing the work and then you're asking for the money. Do you know what I mean? And I mean, how many technicians have been out there, including me, that you go out there, right? And you do the work and then you find out there's something that's additional, right? And it's not that much fun to have to deal with the customer, right? And go up to them and say, yeah, you know, can I like, you know, it's going to be another $20, $60, $200. And those customers get like, what? Well, and, the, and then the problem is, right? Well, you've already, you've already done the work, right? You've already done half the work, maybe, right? You got into it, whatever it is. Maybe potentially you, you know, you got your time, you drove out there. You know, there's just so many things that is amazing to me that when you kind of mesh it together, it's just nuts to me. It really is. It's just nuts how we, I know every business has its problems, but when I look at it and I think about it in hindsight, I go, hmm, I go, it's just amazing. So today I'm already spending money, right? This customer hasn't paid me yet. Right. This has all been phone or well, actually text messages. And, you know, I don't know. I got 60, $70, whatever. No big deal. Right. It's, it's, it's chump money in a sense, but you know, it's like one of those things I got to get the nuts. I got to get the bolts. And I just wonder sometimes if you guys ever feel that way, because when you think about it, <laughs> Tony, I love it. <laughs> we are the bank. Don't you know? <laughs> well said, my friend. Well said. <laughs> and, and and that's that's I, I, that's exactly it. It's like I can't believe in the in the in the industry we're in that how many times it's like you know at least for me and don't you know over whatever sixteen years of this stuff you know what I mean and it's like you're begging. Can I get paid, please? Can I get paid? Paid? Pay me, please. And I was just thinking about it where I think I was doing something earlier with the wife. And I said, you know, I said, you remember, I said, how many jobs we've done. And I said, how many times, you know, something would come in, you know, I, I still remember installing a, uh, a brown garage door for a customer. The guy pulls up in his truck and he's like, he hops out of his truck, right? It's dirt driveway. It's a brand new construction. And he's like, he goes, Boy, he goes, that ain't the door I ordered for color-wise. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah <it's> a... <laughs> wait, wait, are you serious? No, you're serious, aren't you? Yeah, that's really not. Oh, my gosh. And I tell you what, my heart sank. And the only thing you have at that moment is a contract. That's it. That's it. That's it. And that's why I harp on you guys that are out there that are starting and all this stuff. And I always say, you know, preparation is key. You have to slow down. You have to do good preparation. Good preparation, man. So it's like you take a shower, you do preparation, you put some deodorant on so you don't stink later. And, and so all I had to fall back on is when that guy said that I'm like, Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I got my phone, whatever. It's like emailing it's texting and whatever the secretary. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Anybody vendor. Did this guy sign off? And he signed off. Thank goodness. Because the problem is like, for me, it's never been that I, I need to be, I'm not, I don't, I'm not mad at anybody. Things happen. Things happen. For me, it's always been, where did the problem happen? You know what I mean? Was it my fault? Was it the vendor's fault? Was it a secretarial fault? Was it anything? You know what I mean? Did we grab the wrong garage door off the truck? I mean, there's just so many things down the line that can go wrong. And so if you don't have something signed by the customer, well, 
And the reason it was is because he ended up, he didn't know what color he was choosing for trim or siding or whatever. And he ended up thinking he wanted a brown door at first. Well, he never changed it. He forgot. And I remember it was like, I looked at the contract, contract was signed. He ordered a brown door and he's like, yeah, he goes, well, I know how this happened. And it's like, well, how'd this happen? He goes, because, you know, I didn't, I didn't change it. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh. And we have a contract that's signed by him because the world's changing. And especially if, if the cough syndrome didn't teach you anything, it should have, it should have knocked a lot of sense in you a lot that things can change overnight. You know what I mean? Things that you get that take two to three weeks now take four to six to six months to two years. So you need that stuff signed. You need a contract. You need something that's you, you can just forget about it until the time comes, you know? And then when that time comes, you grab the product, you grab your contract, you go install, everything should fit the way it should. Or if it's a new install, you didn't get nothing to measure. Everything's on that contract. Everything. That's so important. So important. I'll never forget that guy. That's not the color door I ordered. <laughs> yeah, you're, good job. You're, wait, you're serious. Oh my gosh, she's serious. What do I do now? I just ordered this door. This door cost me thousands of dollars. What do I do? What do I do? This is a special order. I can't return it without paying a huge penalty. I don't really want to go home tonight and put this on Craigslist. Oh, please. And the guy was like, I remember he said something about it. He goes, he goes, that's okay. He goes, I can paint it, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can paint it. <laughs> you know, nothing's as good as the factory paint, but yeah, go. you can paint it, bud. I'd call, I'd call a professional, honestly, if it was me. But go ahead, paint it, paint it. Big pain in the butt. So, uh Anywho, so with the gate guy, I got that sign at the shop that says, you know, it's like that if you want it fast, it won't be good or something like that. If you want to, you know, you want to spend money, you'll get something better. I don't remember how exactly, but it's one of those things that this customer, you know, he is happy that I'm saving him some money, that I'm not taking the more expensive route. But it's just one of those things. It's like, dude, I'm doing all this stuff, right? I'm getting all this stuff. I'm getting all this material. I still don't know exactly how I'm going to fasten it. I'm probably going to goop it on there, which ain't going to be real pretty because I don't really, really want to put screws in a brand new outside photo eye, you know, where it can get penetrated and water can get into it and wreck it. So I'm going to like silicone it on there. Something's going to look, it's not going to be pretty, but it'll help. It'll work. But it's all these like unknowns, right? These just so many unknowns. I just, I can't believe how many, like I'm literally, I'm literally looking today. I'm looking for like a chunk that's know, two foot or whatever of a piece of, uh, I don't even know what you call it, but it's like uh, your electricians use it for hanging ceiling lights and everything. It's got adjustables on it, right? I'm looking for that because that's what I want to use for a bracket. I can't find it. I swear I got a piece from last time, right? And I'm like, eh, I really don't want to buy a chunk. Well, luckily they sell little ones at Lowe's. So I grabbed one. But it's just one of those things where it's like, you know, I'm sitting there looking at nuts and bolts. Well, I don't know if this is going to work so good. So maybe I better buy these nuts and bolts. Well, I'm buying extra that I don't need. You know, how, you, know you know what I'm trying to say? Like, there's just so many things down the line that once you get into the business, it's amazing, like, what you accumulate. It is. And you're like, oh, my gosh, now I got all this stuff. Now I need a bigger garage or I need a bigger shop or whatever it is. And it's just the list goes on where I sit there and I just go, golly. You know, if I was a realtor, what do I got to carry? I got to carry a few signs. I got to have a little bit of a nicer car. I got to drive in a suit or something. You know, I got to I got to deal with some paperwork, which most of it's all going emails. Trust me. I know they got their own issues, but it's just something to think about. Like I just sit there and I think about all the stuff we get into, you know, um, you know, I, I remember my business partner always telling me, especially up in Michigan, um, you know how it's like you. How is it? Michigan's a lot, you know, the it's everywhere where you got snow and stuff in the cold, right? But you got to wear all the, you got to, you got to get the car hearts, right? Well, I got to get the cards because like nobody feels the pain. I get the pain. I understand the pain, but nobody understands the pain. Like, like you and me, 
right? When you're out there in the snow and the snow's blowing on your face and it starts raining. I mean, you're just like, oh my gosh, I'd do anything. So you start packing like another jacket. You start bringing another set of boots. If you're like me, my feet sweat. So I got to bring like two pairs of socks so I can change them out during the day. So you're not in like a swamp foot. You know, I mean, you got to get the better boots. I mean, there's a lot of money that goes into this stuff. A lot. I still remember one of the old secretaries. She no longer works for me, but she, uh, she, you know, bless her heart. She was, um, I remember we were doing like, man, we were doing probably like four. I don't think we got where, where we did like six doors a day, but we were doing quite a bit, four or five doors. Maybe we, we knock them out. It's a long day. Right. But if you get them right and they're small doors and maybe one big door, you can, you can do it. Anyways, all of a sudden we're, we're dropping down to like one, two or three doors. Right. And I still remember being in that office and she's sitting there and go, ah, I just, I just don't understand why these guys aren't getting these doors done. What are they doing? You know, and I'm sitting there and I, I go, <laughs> oh man, we'll just say her name was Mrs. K. I said, Mrs. K. I said, I said, you need to get in the truck and you need to ride along. I said, because you don't understand. I said, sometimes you got to let the trucks run to heat up the batteries, you know, because sometimes the batteries won't charge for you. I said, they don't have charged batteries from the get go. I said, you ever been in those little trucks? I said, with all your, your you look like, uh, what was it? Is it Will Ferris, whatever that, you know, like Tommy boy, you know, you're, you know, you're all in your car hearts and everything. I said, it's a lot of work. I said, I've had it where I've had to put weather seal in and try to like fit it in the house or something or in the garage or in the truck, wrapping around on the dash, trying to heat it up. Cause I know it's going to shatter. It's just too cold, man. That stuff. It's, it's amazing. You know what I mean? It's amazing. The stuff. And we're men. We get it. We get it done. We get it done. There's no doubt. Let me check this. Make sure. Like I said, if I don't check the phone, the old comments do weird things. But like I said, you guys got any questions or anything? You know, you guys busy out there? Not busy out there? Jump in. I jumped back on here. I ended up. I went hunting. So I, I did the Houdini for you guys. Sorry. We didn't. Uh, we didn't really see much. But nothing worth taking its life. That's for sure. It was kind of slow jump on here make sure i am missing you guys like i said i'm still still trying to figure out what's the best what works the best but anyways went hunting i hope uh by the way too i hope everybody has a good thanksgiving i hope uh, i just drove past the house today that uh it looks like it was it looked like it caught on fire i was like oh man i was like that is just yeah, you guys probably don't know. I actually caught my garage on fire um, quite a few years back. Thanksgiving Eve. Yeah, Thanksgiving Eve. You know, it's kind of weird how, um, you know, it's kind of weird when you think about it. Like, that was a garage door related. I, me I remember when my garage caught on fire. And, and the, reason, the reason was is I was working at a shop. And you guys understand, you know, you're out there hustling and grinding. And I remember I ended up, uh, that garage, um, it caught on fire by the snowmobile. Snowmobile was dumping gas in the belly pan. I didn't realize it. the car got stuck or something. I just repaired it. Uh, I did actually a um, piston in it. And for whatever reason, the carb was dumping. I revved it up, it backfired and boom. And I remember that caught my garage on fire, burned that baby to a crisp, let's just say. A lot of vehicles got ruined. Three wheelers. It's horrible, horrible. Talk about we we had plenty to talk about at uh, Christmas or at Thanksgiving dinner. Uh, that was not fun. That was not fun. I do not wish fire on anybody, especially that manner. So I see uh, the lift master guy. What's your thoughts on the new eighty five open without the cable tension? So I haven't played personally around. Like I said, the guy is running the shop. He's kind of doing. He's talking about jumping back to LiftMaster a little bit. It's gonna be a. It's gonna be tricky for us because it's gonna be one. It's gonna be more cost. Uh, two. It's gonna be um, a little bit slower for us to get them. And it's just with our vendors that we have. It's just we don't have a really good vendor that works where they deliver them to us. So I don't know. I'm glad the module thing's going away because honestly, I used to get I used to get flack all the time. You know, you're not installing it. You install it the wrong way. And I'm like, it's spring loaded. Like it works. It's just like it, I don't know why it like, it would not, it would not detect what I needed it to detect for customers. 
And the 8500, I absolutely hated it. I I just I despise of it. I I think jack shaft openers. You know, I know a lot of people like them and I think they I think they have a place, but there's just nothing like moving the door. Moving the door is the best way. I just to me, when I think of a jack shaft on a on a residential, I go, why don't you just put why don't you put square square uh, tires on your car? Why don't you? Well, because tires have been round for years, and that'd be stupid. And I'm like, well, that's what putting a jack shaft. And I understand for saving, or if you got a lift, or if you got high lift, I agree. You, I mean, you got to have it. You got to have it. They got their place. Maybe you don't have the headroom or something, you know, but. I still remember my first one and I was yanking on the cord and I'm like, what? The, why is this thing not working? And I actually had it disconnected. And I remember I called tech support, tech support couldn't help me through it. I mean, it's a hot summer day. I'm up in this guy's garage. I remember sitting on the ladder, sweat just rolling down me. And it was my own fault. It was my own fault. I wasn't that seasoned with it. The, the limits on it were horrible. Um, they, I think LiftMaster with the new limits, they've gotten a lot better. There's, there's definitely no arguing that, but I still don't understand why LiftMaster has always had that weird glitch in it where like when you bring it down and it, it stays up like an extra inch or it'll go past, it goes past like an inch. So you got to leave it up an inch. So it sets right. I don't know. That just doesn't make like where I set it is where I want it to be. I just don't like a lot of this new technology. I'm just still old school. I like my mechanical le limits. I like my 350 Chevys. You know, I just, I like simple. I know some of the stuff has got a lot of bells and whistles, and I, th I think it's okay, but I've, I feel like we've veered away from reliability of garage doors. And I think that really sucks for you and for me, because ultimately in this business, guess who pays for it? That's who pays for it. We do. And that's what really ticks me off because any of these things that aren't reliable, that don't, they have glitches, um, and to be honest, over the years, I've gotten I've gotten really turned off by a lot of these vendors. I really have because um, we'll say WD was one of them, right? We go down there, we go to their warehouse, right? Whatever their factory, you know, they show us around. They, you know, some dude shows up and he, I'm the engineer. I'm the one that does all the testing, <laughs> you know. And I'm sitting there, mm, you do all the testing, huh? Well, why don't you let Uncle Dave come take a look at your testing? Because I'll tell you some stuff. But the problem is, you know how it is. It's not going to happen because the bean counters aren't going to let it. Well, if we do it like how he wants it, that's going to cost us an extra 20 cents. Nobody's going to pay that. We can't be competitive with, with Genie or LiftMaster or whoever's out there. You know what I mean? Uh, that's just how it works. And so I, 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 it really disappoints me. I really, um, you know, I don't think uh, PowerMaster makes residential openers that I know of, but they're commercial ones. They're lengthy to get, but I think they make, I think they try. I really do. I think they try. Tech support was good. It's, it was very, very, um, how do you call it? Uh, small hometown based customer service. So PowerMan, I, I always wanted to get my hands on one of their uh, gate operators, but the problem is, is we're so programmed with Lanier and we understand it and it makes sense and it works. It's just hard to try their product. And then, you know, we don't have any, we don't have none of the knowledge and things like that. So it's just, but yeah, the 85, I just drove past. I, I still think about, I get people all the time that hound me on my videos, right? I'll get guys that are like, oh, this guy, he's an idiot. Fine. You, <laughs> you do whatever you want, man. You watch the video. <laughs> yeah. But I'm like, I sit there and I drive past this guy that's uh, it's a place on it's it's down the road a ways. It's it's I don't know. It's on some main drag. Right. I go by this guy's house all the time and I sit there and every time I go past, he sits way off the road. Beautiful house, you know, had a beautiful family. And I think I go, God, I remember going there with that 8500 and having problem after problem after problem. It seemed like every two weeks I was going there and I finally just put a genie. I just put a genie screwdriver on there. And it was like the, like, I didn't even know the guy. It's like, we're not even friends anymore. I drive by there and I'm like, oh, he never calls. It's been years. It's been years. And the guy just never calls. Well, because I decided to move the door, you know, instead of trying to dump the springs. And it just, 
I think the newer ones are better, but like even Genie, I've watched some of theirs with that chattering. Yeah, I think that's kind of chintzy. I mean, I get it. I understand why they're doing it. I just, man, I just, you know, the head unit's back where it belongs. Everything just seems like it's in place. When it comes to these, these jet, it's like you're kind of like in no man's land. You know, like, what do I do with this? It goes here. Crap, no outlet. Mm, well, we got an extension cord. We can put it over here so we can plug it in. Doesn't this look crappy? Okay. You know, some things like that. What's the dots? Yeah, LiftMaster Lament thing is so... Man, Justin, are they still doing... Is LiftMaster still got... You know, I haven't been such a while since I played with LiftMaster. Are they still having that issue with the door, like with the standard trolley residential? Like, do you, when you set it, you got to do that weird, like, leave it up an inch. Then you got to run it. You're like, crap, it still ain't right. Then you got to, like, jog it some more. You got to go through the settings. Man, that's annoying. Like, I just, I'm always like... That took me a while to learn, and I, I've never, I never heard any rumors if that was like, was that built into the design, or was that, is that a flaw, you know, or like, they're, are they trying to do like the board tests, like, oh, you set it down on the board, and that's where it's supposed to be, like, maybe that's why, right, the board test, you know, I, I just I always threw my mind, I just thought, man, I don't, I don't get this, I'm just so glad they have improved on them from the old 85s with the what I have like the one button to like learn and you only have one button for upward. It was a silly man where now it's lit. It is nice for homeowners. They can mess with it too. You know, I always wanted to, if you guys ever have problems, I don't know if, you know, one time what I always thought about doing is I was going to, um, I was going to get like a cellophane tape. That's like, I, you can find it. You can buy it from, uh, I think it's Uniline or something like that. But it's like, if they tamper with it, it like shows it's been tampered with that tape because I'll never forget. I had an old man. He was far away and I installed it. Right. And I was like, I'm the sir. I was the guy that installed it. Right. So I'm like, there ain't no like ifs, ands or buts. This puppy should be perfect. You know, and things happen. And he says, uh, they said, Hey, it's, it's not working for him or something. All right, fine. I'll go out there and do a free service call. Not a problem. That's what he paid for. Right. So I drive out there. I'll never forget that old man. I'm up there. I'm like, like, I'm so lost. I'm like, how did this thing get its limits? So screwed up. And this old man finally goes, he goes, oh, he goes, yeah, he goes, I tried to program that to my car. You tried to program this to your car. And yet Lowe's is calling me. I'm coming out here to do a free service call. I don't know how I'm going to come to like, you know what I mean? Like, is it really worth me to call them? And it's like, you know, you guys need to pay me $35 or $65. Well, we don't pay over $65, sir you know, and try to get a, a work order and a print and an invoice, you know, because this isn't my fault. You know what I mean? It's because that old man got up there and started pushing the buttons and he was trying to link it to his car and it wasn't working. Right. I don't know if it was some weird home link thing going on at the time or not. It just, it didn't matter. It was like, you know, it's like, no, sir, by the, you need to use the remote that's provided. It'll be fine. Like we got this really bad, like some people, you know, especially for this guy, it was an older guy. Uh, he had an older car, wasn't nothing fancy. Not that that means, but it's just, you know, it's like, it's, I, 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 I cringe because people, it's like they see something built into their car and that needs to work. Not this other, this, and I get it. It's a preference. I really do. But you guys know, if you guys use those home links or whatever, they're not as fast. They're not as good. Typically, you know, they're slow. Like you got to sit there and hold the button. Like I've had so many old people, love you old people, by the way. And like they got it like, like they just, it doesn't work. Like you gotta like count to two, one, two, like go, you know, like the exercise. And like I always tell you guys, so it's only on certain year models. Oh, great. That really throws me. It's only on certain year models for lift master. Great. So now I got to really think about it. Which model is this today? Is this one I got to do? You know, <laughs> I just want it to be like standard. You know, I'm still like, I said, I like Dale screws, you know, Dale screw. I mean, they were kind of clumsy and the, the only time they'd buck sometimes. I remember that, but, uh, they still do it. A board test would actually make sense. Yeah. Like I said, maybe that's, I didn't read the instructions. <laughs> you know, I've just kind of evolved with them over the years, but they didn't send me no instructions about the light bulbs. Yeah. They didn't send me no instructions about those curly cube light bulbs that were causing all those openers to open randomly, right? You know, I'm getting these phone calls. I think my neighbor's got my 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 uh 
my remote code. And I'm like, huh? Like, I don't think that's even possible. Oh, yeah, 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 they do. You know, and I go over there and it's like, when did you change that light bulb? Oh, last week. When did you start having the problem? About last week. It's that light bulb. You can't have that light bulb in there. You know, I always say light bulbs are going to be the death of me. I'm going to make a shirt because I went round and round about those things. I could I could murder somebody. <laughs> Wasn't that always just the way? It was crazy. So I'm trying to think. So what are your thoughts? So LiftMaster Guy, I don't know if he's still here or not, is um, has anybody has anybody else been dealing with the 85s? They don't even call them 85s. Isn't it called something else now for the 8500s? I think it's called something else. Let's see if I can find it here. I can't remember. I don't know what the model is on it. But they've changed them. And there's a couple different ones. I got one. I still remember that's at the shop. And we ended up buying it. It was with an old guy that used to work here. And he foobarred this one. It was, they're going to do a, what was it? We're going to put a jack shaft opener. And I don't know whose bright idea this was. I, I was really no part of it. We were putting a jack shaft opener on a rolling, like rolling steel door. But it wasn't a rolling steel. It was a storage unit door. And oh my gosh, don't ever, ever, ever do that. Don't, just don't, don't. Don't ever put a opener on a rolling, it's not a rolling steel, they call it. It's it's a storage unit door. The ones that go clangy, clang, clang all the way up. It's, it's they're impossible to make them reliable. It's just, I just, that's how I look at it. Yeah, you can do it. And if it's like one of those things that's for your own personal house, go for it. Because you're going to be there. You're going to be the one that's playing with it. You're the one that's tinkering with it. But I remember I remember this guy one time, right? We ended up, uh, I installed one. I ordered it. And I, I don't know where it was. I was I was green back then. And I we ended up doing this uh, rolling door, storage unit door. And I remember it came in and I was like, oh, it's like, that's not really what I ordered. But I guess we're going to have to make it work. And they even sent me an opener with it, right? And I thought, how did the manufacturer even like do this? How do they not like call me or something or go, what in the, like, this is no way this is going to work. But this like they married them together. Well, come to find out with a storage unit door, it's a hollow shaft. Hollow, not a solid shaft. And luckily the place I was working at, right, they were a machine shop place. So I ended up having the machine a shaft that would go inside the hollow shaft. And I remember we bolted it or something like that. The thing was just never reliable, never reliable. It just had problems after problems. And I remember we ended up, uh, finally, the guy was like, what do we do? And I was like, we really need to put a sectional door in here, you know, with this and that. And I mean, we just didn't have, the, the room was weird. And he was like, he didn't really want it projecting out into the um, building. Oh, that's what it was. Originally, he ordered a sectional door, right? And then at the last minute, he canceled it. And of course, like Tony said, who's the bank? You know, I was the bank. So I ate that door, right? Because just as he called it, like just came in and I'm like, oh, I'm like, oh, geez, oh gosh, this guy's like really close to the shop. And I don't want to like, oh, yeah, we'll get you. Yeah, roll. And he's like, it's, I just don't want forklifts coming through with their booms up and they're smashing into it. And I'm like, yeah, I'm like, that's a good idea. Crap. I should have thought of that. I don't know. Oh. And then it's like phone call. Hey, can we get a can we get a rolling door? Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be this price, X amount. Come to find out that rolling door was um it was a storage unit door, which I didn't know that. I was green. And like I said, that thing came and oh my gosh. And the problem was like when you make a when you make a storage unit door come down, they're like the way they're grooved, it's um it does not like down pressure. So it started like tearing this door apart. Every time it would smack into the ground, it was, it would make the, we had to like, we like riveted the door together. It was horrible. You can't, you can't do that. You know what I mean? The rivets stick out. It was a mess. It was absolute mess. Don't do it. So you got to get a rolling steel door, which cost a lot of money, not a storage unit door. I forget what they call those ones. It's rolling steel. But anywho, I don't think there's any more questions on here. Um, let me just double check. See if I caught everybody before I jump off. But like I said, I hope everybody has a good, a good gobble gobble. And don't, oh, Mr. Rich, I wonder where you've been. Um, 
don't forget you can always you can always email me don't be afraid like i said don't even if it's a simple um Ooh, CHI makes a good rolling. You know, I don't think I've ever dealt with a CHI for rolling steel. I don't think I have. I think I've done with Wayne Dalton. I've dealt with the overhead brand a little bit, but I don't remember ever buying one from CHI. Probably because we deal with Clope, Wayne Dalton, um, and we just come across the overhead ones when we're working on them. We don't, we can't purchase them or anything. Oh, you can for a million dollars. That's cool. I didn't even know CHI. I thought CHI only did the Pandors. So that's pretty cool. I'm glad you mentioned that, Justin, because it's always nice to have options. You know, the, the rolling steel is a different animal, man. I'm telling you, like, especially when it comes to, um, you know, fire doors. I mean, and everybody's got their own stuff they want you married into. And everybody's got, like, their own design and the slats and blah, blah, blah. I mean, it's like. You know, when I look at it, I almost go, you could probably like do super duper documents of it. Like, I mean, this sounds silly, but this is how I'd probably maybe approach it, right? You go install the door, right? You take video and pictures of the whole darn thing, right? And then you either download it into a file somewhere or you, like, even if you got a Polaroid, right? The old Polaroid that spits out the picture, you know what I mean? And like stuffed it with that that thing because I tell you what, that stuff is a nightmare to go back, especially when you stay in business, you know, three, five, 10, 15, 20 years down the road and you come back and they smash into it. And now you got to find the slats and they go, well, you know, and they got different people in the office now that don't remember that model and they change because just like what you're saying, I see Justin says, you know, uh, CHI is a good rolling. Um, I believe they are fairly new. Okay. Well, you know, it might be a good product, you know, and, but they might change it down the, I mean, we've all experienced it with, you know, Wayne Dalton changes some of their designs. I mean, what now it's not, we don't get 96, we get 9605 for sections and stuff like that, you know, and there's a little difference, right? You know, just like when they do, what is it called? The Wayne Mark? Anybody remember the Wayne Mark? Was it Wayne Mark? Mark? Wayne Mark. Something like that. It was like those ones that had, they were just like universal, which you know, when you kind of think about it, it might not have been a bad idea, you know, back in the day, because all you had to do is you could, you know, buy the sections, right? And you just chop them off, you know what I mean? And then you already keep the springs, you got the track, right? You don't have that nine by seven, not a problem. You just take a skill saw through it. You know, those things, even the Wayne Mark ones, they didn't have like end caps on there, ugly as sin. You know, the Wayne Dalton ones, they had like the foam exposed, no end caps, you know? I mean, but you think about it, if you had a flush, uh pinstripe one or something with a little bit of wood grain easy squeezy you know keep those in stock and you just go to town man i mean so <laughs> but those those rolling steel it just seems like you can go back into them and they they just things change they change and it's like if you had a picture of the tag that was on especially if it's in a dirty environment and you put it like in a ziploc bag and you stuffed it up by the 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 you know the head unit somewhere or could put it up in a rafter where it's saved put it in a vanilla envelope I mean, I mean, think about the next guy, right? Like, like the one guy I always work with, right? He goes, yeah, I didn't know how that works. He goes, the next guy's going to be, going to be me. And I'm thinking, I know how that is because I used to think for years, I was thinking, oh, I installed this or something. I tell myself, I go, well, hopefully, hopefully I'm retired or I'm gone before this thing ever needs, you know, and then it's like, you know, five years later, they're calling, you know, that door you installed. And you're like, yeah, I think you installed it last week. And you're like, no, it was five years ago. Oh, anyways. Is that still covered? Or? No, it's not. Oh, okay. Anyways, it needs this. And you go back and you're like, I don't even remember. Where, where did I get this door? How much was this door? What model was this door? Oh my gosh, we changed our CRM system. Crap. We're not on, we're not on QuickBooks anymore. Now we're on Jobber. We're not using Jobber. Oh, you know, and then it's, dude, I don't got nothing in the system. I don't, you know, I, I've had all this. I've had all this. I've been long around long enough, you know. Torque tube junk. Yeah. Torque master. I feel the manufacturers change designs slightly every three to five years makes panels, makes finding panels impossible. Man, isn't that the truth? You know, it didn't, it didn't seem when I first started out, it didn't seem like it was changing so much, you know, maybe I don't know, 10 years or so, but it seems like they've all concluded because I heard this through a sales lady one time and I kind of know this, um, just from experience, let's just say, but it's, it's, uh, you know, when it comes to like these big dogs, you know, the Clope, Wayne Dalton, all that, you know, these guys, 
And that, and that's kind of something for you guys. You don't want to screw them over because they all talk, you know what I mean? In a nutshell, it's like, they're, they're kind of like, like the general motors, right. But there's like Saturn, there's Pontiac, which I know these ones are gone. You know, there's GMC, there's Chevy. Well, you know, well, I'm the one that runs the GMC department or something. Right. But you start screwing them, right. General motors knows, you know what I mean? And so it's like, they're all kind of in the same pool together and they know things they talk because, um, well, it's just, I just, I can't say too much, but I know some insiders of that stuff and they do talk. And so, but when they, they change it, it's, it's like, like I said, I think Menards is really good for it around here. Our lumber star, you know, Menards, they, you know, I had that Wayne Dalton. I told that guy, so that thing's junk. And he goes, yeah, he goes, that guy inside said the same thing, you know, just think what they did, what the company of Menards just did for their employees for new guys coming in that are working there, right? Like they don't have to answer to that stuff anymore. We don't sell that anymore. Yeah, that product's gone. We don't sell that anymore. I don't know what you're talking about. It's gone. Yeah, it was junk. That's why we, we don't sell anymore. Bye-bye. Go online and see if you can find parts. Bye-bye. You know, it's kind of like, um, what was it? That one, it's, uh, was it my cue? Was it my cue? You know, I still remember when they came in, you know, salesperson, these are going to be the best revolutionary things. You guys need to buy a skit of them. You know, and it was like, they gave us a couple of them for like discounted price, or whatever. And we couldn't make the darn things work. And you know, I remember standing on the door and, um, you know, my, my partner at time, he's just like, well, that's the way it's going to have to be. I'm like, dude, it's a brand new house. I'm like, we can't leave it a foot off the ground. You know, and he's like, how else do you make it? I'm like, we got to manipulate it somehow. You know what I mean? The, the self-learning limits which I already knew was going to be a horrible idea. And it was, and he ends up, uh, I said, could you imagine? I'm just like, dude, this is a duplex, like a brand new house. Like we're going to tell the builder like, yeah, just, that's how, that's how the new stuff is. It sits a foot off the ground. So, so yeah, you know, the possums, raccoons, they can, they can just walk in and they can do whatever they need to. It's, it's, it's good ventilation, it's good ventilation, you know, but we already bought this and we already sold them on it. And it was like, we had to like, I remember stand on the door to try to manipulate it or turn the tube or something like that. We finally got it to learn, but horrible self-learning limits. Oof, oof, not, not when you're a professional installer and you need, you know, something you start learning as you get these right here, gray hairs. You start learning that how precious time is. When you're young, you know, you're just, you're just out there flailing it, baby. You know what I mean? You, you know, you're making a few bucks, you start a job, you do this, you start doing some hustling, whatever. But when you start realizing that time is money and you, you start wanting to do a, you know, you start wanting to do a servicing and, and doing a good product, you know, you want to do a good install, you know, you want to be able to come by in five or eight years and still look at it and go, wow, that thing's still holding up. Still working good, Johnny. Oh, it's working great, Dave. Awesome, man. Happy to hear that. Right. So you're not getting your, your name smeared over the years. Right. And we do the best we can at the moment we're in. Right. You know, we're, we're we always are learning. We always want to do better. I know I am for myself. You know, I've 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 taken shortcuts, not deliberately. You know, what I mean, but I just didn't know. You know, what I mean, I thought that was the best at the time. And that's what comes with experience, you know, over time. And you hope you do better and you hope that people can look past that, forgive you, or you get new customers and you treat them well and you, you keep moving on. But it's a very tough industry. You know, when I look back, I, I sit there and I think about how much time you spend, um, you know, and, and for me in the business, you know, I, I built a vortex, you know, that just it's a funnel, you know, and it, and it, it it's not that it doesn't have flaws, but it's it's um, I'm going to build a little sculpture sometime, but it's kind of like that that bucket with holes in it with a spigot, you know what I mean? The spigot's always running, right? There's holes in it, right? There's always holes that can be plugged, you know? And right now with the economy, the way it is, the spigot could start slowing down. You know, there's no doubt about that. I, I don't, I don't doubt that one bit, but it's just something that you gotta, what I never liked about the business. I, I'll give you an example. We did this customer, uh, commercial customer, been a good customer, no problems right, with them. Right. And I remember we, uh, <clears throat> they had a semi truck driver smash into the garage door. And of course it was a brand, it was like, it was a uh, door was probably only like three months old, maybe this is a bigger door. 
it's, I don't know, it's a huge door. It's 20 some wide by 14 tall. And uh, <laughs> I see Rich in there putting Swift. Oh, man. No, what it was, we, we don't quite know. They had cameras in there. <clears throat> and the photo I was doing something weird. Now, of course, you know, this is a commercial operator. I think we were using like Omrons with a LiftMaster or something like that. And anyways, I remember uh, we could see it down on the driver, right? <clears throat> but ultimately, they, they pull the whole truck in the garage. Ultimately, the driver hit the door. I mean, ultimately, right? I mean, that's just, but I remember the guy that was there and he was, he was a super good dude at the time. He's moved up now, but he's like, he's, he's like, you know, is this going to be covered under warranty? And I'm like, hell no, this is not going to be covered under warranty. I mean, alone, this panel is like $1,200. I mean, it's a, it's a two inch thick door. I mean, we're talking 20 foot span, you know, steel back. I mean, ah, no, this thing is not covered. And I'm like, dude, I'm like, it's one of those things where the dude was driving. I mean, it sucks for the dude. And I don't know what the situation is. He pulled in the building and didn't have a problem. The door never moved, right? The door never, he didn't hit it going into the building, which might've been, he was heavy or he did something with his airbags. But when he left, he took a part of the door with him. And so we're watching the cameras. We can't quite figure out. It, only thing I can think is maybe it jumped tooth. We didn't have a spreader bar. I had a huge sprocket. It was a weird setup. Like, I don't remember what the, why the reason was, but something was goofy. You know what I mean? But it worked. Anyways, the semi-truck company, right? Now, mind you, this is, of course, at the end of the year. The semi-truck company paid the place, right? The corporation. They paid them. It was, it was like, I think it was somewhere in like $10,000 or something like that. And because there was multiple panels and they had labor and I don't know if they had other stuff or something. But anyway, it was like $10,000. And so I remember they ended up, um, they need to pay us, right? Well, all of a sudden I'm like kind of asking about it, like in the middle of, I don't know what it was, maybe October or something like that, because the secretary asked me about it or something. And so I'm like, hey, is, you know, and he's like, and he kind of, you know, he's a good dude. He gave me some insider. He goes, you know, here's the thing. He goes, I've already told them this is kind of a mom and pa shop. And he goes, this ain't fair. And he goes, but you know what they're doing? He says, the trucking company already paid us, which is the other guy, the corporation. He says, they already paid us. He says, you know what they're doing? He says, they're investing the money. He says, they're investing the money. And they want to hang on to it as long as they can, because they're going to take that money, invest it. And they're going to try to get some interest off of it. Huh? What? This is like above my pay scale, man. Like, what are you talking about? Like, so they already paid you guys and we've already fixed it. And now you guys are like still holding payment. Like what's going on here? And it's already been, you know, 30, 60 days or whatever. You know what I mean? Like past their normal when they should pay us. And because I'm already kind of doing like, are they going to try to dispute this? You know, now that we, like I've said before, like I said it before, like, like, like Tony said, we're the bank, we're the bank, we're the bank, right? It wasn't like we went in there and said, uh, hello. Yes, we have products. You need to pay us before. Yes. Write the check right now. Write the check right now. I'm not doing it. You know? No, right? They've, they've been a good customer, you know, blah, blah, blah. But there was this gray area of like, is this covered? No, it's not. That's clear. We're, this is what your, here's your price. They're okay with it. Did they sign for it? I don't know. I don't remember if they even signed for it. They should sign for it. So anyways, but I've had guys leave too, right? You know, that guy that signed, they leave. So anyways, he ends up, uh, we're going to get the money, right? But they already invested it. So what you know what they did i mean within like i think two weeks or three weeks before the end of the year they dumped that money on us now why'd they do that i know why they did that because they want to get that money off their books it's now it's on our books you know what i mean and now it looks like we got a huge you know we got a ten thousand dollar surplus here that's not even still paid the vendor right so see how they kind of can abuse you and so i like to I like to tell you these stories so you guys can hopefully learn and understand the bigger picture of the business. So you're not like, oh my gosh, we're going to, you know, it's, 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 it doesn't work that way. It really doesn't work that way. All right. I'm going to jump off here. I swear. I promise this time. I hope you guys have a great Thanksgiving. If I don't jump on here before, I might jump on again later, do it a little bit later. We'll see if some more guys are available. Um, got any questions? Throw them in the comments. Always can email me. Email's the best. 
And uh, I appreciate it, Mr. Liftmaster and Rich B and Tony. You were good. You were good on there, bud. I appreciate it and appreciate the thumbs up. I always appreciate that. And like I said, we'll see you guys on the next one. Peace out. I don't know how to shut this off. I guess you guys just I guess we're just gonna watch the fire with me. Yeah. No.